All right, guys, let's talk about healing from prawn, okay? You guys know what this is, obviously. Internet pornography. I'm saying it so YouTube doesn't, you know, uh, ban this video or like censor it or whatever, because I want people to really learn from this and hear it, okay? But yeah, man, let's get into this today. It's gonna be a deep dive, deep topic. Let's get it. Yeah. I'm inspired. I'm inspired. Hey there guys, how's it going? My name is Sumit Chatterjee from the Flow Zone Academy and I'm a flow state coach, which means that I help you feel better and perform better. Today I'm talking about, you know, healing from this addiction to prawn, okay? Obviously, a lot of young men are being drawn to this easy access, instant gratification mentality of finding whatever fantasies that they like online and getting so captured by that that it takes them to a different world and they start to disconnect from this world with the advent of you know social media virtual reality things are getting a lot worse okay things are going to a point where people are going to cut themselves off from actually living and dating and being in relationships You'd rather stay at home and envision your favorite model, you know, sucking your pee pee instead of you actually taking action and talking and communicating with people. Now, this is dangerous because you don't see that the prawn industry has hijacked your consciousness, hijacked your mind. The most primal basic instinct that you have is being put into this industry. And I have nothing against the industry. I've been a consumer of this industry for a very, very long time, ever since I was a teenager. But I've noticed also it, it was hell for my sexual health, okay? It really was because I would get PIED, you know, prawn-induced erectile dysfunction. There would be just a lot of, you know, noise in my brain. I would start to distort how I used to see women. And after a while, you just kind of get a lower arousal to sexual stimuli and to real women because you just desire that fake world, in a sense, that fake fantasy world of the, the prawn star, right? A lot of people are against this industry because of religious shame or political doctrines, things like this. You know, are you liberal or are you conservative? All these different things. Now, of course, the vast thing is political, but I think we have to understand the socioeconomic, the spiritual, all of this, right? Because if you're consuming toxic graphic imagery in your mind constantly, right, constantly, that's slowly making you feel impure, making you stuck in your own head, and you won't actually want to communicate or express yourself at the greatest level, right? You're going to go more inwards. You're gonna feel trapped in your own communication. Biggest advice I can give you for your healing is to find a purpose so real, so raw, that it overrides that need to kill time and get on the internet to watch prawn. Find a purpose, find a mission so real, so strong that it motivates you so much that make your life about that and not the escapist behaviors. Because people can see it on your face, man. You know, when you're consuming this thing a lot. You think they can. It's a vibe thing, right? You're gonna just be socially awkward. You're gonna be more inwards. You're not gonna talk to anybody the way that you want to freely, expansively, you know, intelligently, eloquently. And so it's time to find a mission, a purpose for you that overrides the pleasure the momentary hedonic pleasure. So purpose over pleasure. That is the stoic responsibility that I'm giving you. And what I thought was, you know, depression or anxiety or, you know, even a forgetfulness or a brain fogginess, all of these were symptoms of a chronic overconsumption of something and constantly wanting to escape the present moment and be in this fantasy world. Instead of escaping, the first thing you want to do is face the pain head on. What are you running away from? What are you avoiding? And prawn is the solution. This is where we get real. For me, it started when I was very young. Okay, it started from a trauma when I was very young. 
I actually worked with a recovery coach like two years back who really helped me to reframe a lot of the different things and took me back to that initial trauma of like, you know, this teacher hitting me with a ruler and how that kind of links to this idea of not being able to trust the opposite sex and, you know, just having this intense resistance towards figures of authority like teachers, you know, policemen, anybody. And we have to start to speak about this, guys, okay? We have to notice that our kinks, our fantasies are completely normal, but society will distort them and make you feel ashamed for your desires. It will make you start to consume things in your own mind and start to do things in secrecy. If this was such a great thing, why aren't we openly just talking about it, freely speaking about it? Maybe you are with some of your friends, that's cool. But usually, people are kind of like, whoa, no, that's not something that you talk about. What do you mean your favorite category is interracial? What do you mean that, you know, you want to do that? That's not allowed, that's taboo, right? And the more resistance we face against this and also the terrifying withdrawal effects of just like trying to cut away from it, you start to notice how much of an impact that it has, right? This novelty is actually a flow state trigger, right? You see new women all the time, or you know, if you're a woman watching this, you see lots of multiple guys. And it's this Coolidge effect right, of this variety, this novelty that you're constantly seeing new people, you know, naked bodies everywhere. And you slowly start to desensitize yourself to the activity, right? Doesn't make it special anymore. Uh, I understand in Muslim cultures, you know, they keep the whole body covered. And to a certain extent, you know, I'm starting to understand a little bit. Of course, you can have your own freedom to wear whatever you want. But at the same time, I'm, I'm just starting to see like, hey, yeah, that's supposed to be a private act with somebody, you know, and not to flaunt it out into the world and just, you know, have it be this thing uh, where you just show everybody, you know, some people are exhibitionists, go and do what you want. You know what I'm saying? To be trapped as a man in your own mind of being like, you know, having all these fantasies about this girl that you want to talk to, you have a crush on, but you're not even saying hi. Like that is just a very dangerous place to be because you are, you are feeding the fire within, the primal drive within. And the less you take action, the more you start getting, you know, all these old memories coming up, all this past, you know, and all also imprinted through the internet, this fast access porn where you can, you know, envision people in your real life and say like, oh, she looks kind of like this prawn star, right? And then you start, you start deluding yourself into this instant gratification world instead of doing the hard work, instead of having the discipline to talk to people, to approach them, to text them, to be loving, to be kind, to be caring, to be open, to be sensual, to be sexual. So the first thing I would say is have an accountability system somehow. Get on a program, listen to content that is primarily around this. What started to get me to talk about this is the book, Your Brain on Prawn, okay? That is actually what got me to open the rabbit hole. Uh, I've heard about this book years ago, but now I recently started to go through the audiobook. Uh, like a day ago, I decided because this thing has been kind of like looming over me like my whole life. And I've decided that no, nope, nope. You know, I'm on day 22 away from it or whatever. Um, and I don't need it to gratify me. I don't need it to fill some void. I don't need it to run away from some pain anymore. It's just become a habit. Simple as that, it's just become a bad habit. So how do we get out of a bad habit? The first thing is to accept it, confront it, come to terms with it and be like, yeah, you know, I do have a problem with this. And it's completely valid. And you need to ask for help. You know what I'm saying? You need to ask for help. You need to find the resources that are out there. There's many resources online, you know. 
I work with a few people who have this similar similar issue, you know, and really dealing with this issue. Because it can keep you very trapped. It can keep you, as a man, you know, why wouldn't you want to just be this free sexual being, right? And desire women, right? It's, it's a biological drive, man. So if you're hiding behind the laptop screen and you're just kind of, you know, being so occult about it instead of actually sharing, it's gonna, it's gonna start to take a, a hold on you. It's gonna be the chains around your potential. But when you recognize that you've been putting yourself in these chains, you have the responsibility, you can step up. And certain people, I hear them say, oh man, but I slipped back up, you know? What about the fact that you haven't touched that thing for a week? What about that man, you know? Giving yourself way more credit, because this thing isn't easy. You might see all these reviews online, like, oh, it's so easy, I've gone 50 days without it, or whatever, and you're reading it, and you're, you're doing this self-comparison check with you, and why, how come I can't do that, you know? Stop this comparison trap, and just compare yourself to you yesterday. How are you different in relationship to it today? And this is where you're slowly gonna start to shift your character, because, hey, would the A-list celebrity version of you still smack it to a bunch of naked people online, you know? Would that be your ideal self, like your higher self? There's nothing wrong with that, you know? You might bust one out in the toilet now and again, but it's not this big deal thing, right? It's not like, oh, I've got to. I feel this anxiousness if I don't. That's when you start getting like, okay, this thing is really starting to take control of me and I'm not me anymore. This thing is consuming me. I'm a consumer of it or is it consuming me? That's the real question here. So when you take back your control, your self-control, which is the main thing here, it's all self-control work. Not to resist it, but to look at the relationship with you and this thing quite differently. I'm gonna start to explore this book a little bit more. Obviously, I wanna look into the science of it because that's how my brain works too, you know? I like to find the science, I like to find the proof. So, I mean, I'm gonna let you guys know a little bit more on this channel about this, but this is just what's flowing out for me right now, I'm starting to understand that, look, this isn't gonna keep you trapped much longer. It's time to take control of your life. And it starts with you. It starts with you making a decision not to escape anymore, but instead lean into the thing you've been avoiding, the thing that you fear, which is either talking to women, you know, whatever it is. Maybe you went through a bad breakup and you resorted to prawn from there. Hey, look, it's time to confront this thing, man. Okay? It's easy access, okay? These prawn stars aren't in love with you. They don't even know you, okay? So it's time to wake up. Get out there, share yourself. Get on these dating apps, get on matches into dates. If you wanna release this toxicity from your system and this emotional gunk, get on Soul Eater, the program, my shadow work mastery program. We're here to help you out. All of us, the coaches there are, are there to help you out, okay? You're not in this alone. If you have any questions, shoot me a message on Instagram. Have an incredible day. May the flow be with you and stay legendary. Let's get it to the Upward Spiral Gang.